हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू सी सी एड यूसैट लाइव लेक्चर डियर फ्रेंड्स टू डेज टॉपिक फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज एयर मासस वेदर एंड ग्लोबल क्लाइमेट इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द टाइप्स ऑफ एयर मासस देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स देयर डेवलपमेंट एंड हाउ दे अफेक्ट आर लोकल वेदर एंड एज वेल एज ग्लोबल क्लाइमेट टू टेक दिस लेक्चर वी हैव आर सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर बी डब्ल्यू पांडे डॉक्टर पांडे इज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी डेली स्कूल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली एंड he has written many books and articles over the issues and he has been teaching since last many years so i hope that his knowledge and experience will help us to understand the issues and dynamics related to the air masses weather and climate so with this i would like to welcome dr pandit to our show and uh, request him to begin his lecture welcome sir thank you smita thank you very much so friends today uh, i'm going to discuss about air masses how air masses affecting local weather conditions and uh, how air masses affecting the regional climatic conditions friends nowadays there a lot of discussions going on around the world about the climate and climate change and let me tell you that overall climate change climatic conditions these are not a recent phenomena these changes are universal and ancestral so how air masses affecting the weather conditions how the predictions about the daily weather forecasting you can say become possible and that is also through air masses and how air masses govern climatic conditions over different continents so i will discuss mainly the northern continents like north america europe and asia continents which are largely affected by air masses so first of all what are air masses it's very important to understand an air mass is an immense body of air a huge body of air a large body of air characterized with homogeneity of different specific conditions features like homogeneity of temperature homogeneity of pressure homogeneity of moisture and homogeneity of source region friends this uh, characteristics of homogeneity is the main feature of air mass air mass cannot form in the condition of heterogeneity therefore homogeneous condition the four important points the homogeneity of temperature means similar temperature over a large geographical area and longer duration of time so that due to homogeneous temperature and over large geographical area a longer duration of the time air gets accumulated and form air mass second important point is homogeneity of pressure if pressure gradient is high if lapse rate is high so pressure gradient decided by the density of isobars if isobars are high then pressure gradient are high in this circumstances air mass will not form therefore at this point i would like to make it clear that air masses are formed with homogeneous pressure and in the typical anti cyclonic condition when center is having little high pressure than outside so outside have little low pressure center have high pressure this condition called anti cyclonic and vice versa with cyclonic if center have low pressure and peripheral area have high pressure so wind direction is inward and if there is a inward wind direction that is called cyclonic condition in the cyclonic condition air mass will never form 
So, homogeneous pressure with anticyclonic condition in the center. Third is homogeneous moisture. Moisture differentiation brings pressure differentiation. It brings movement of winds. Therefore, moisture, homogeneous moisture where the velocity of wind is very, very low. And the fourth one, which is most important point is source reason. Friends, air mass develop in a particular source. So, either it will be absolute polar area, say high latitude or it should be tropical area, say low latitude. Air mass cannot form in the mid latitude. So, homogeneous source region, polar region or tropical region. Other way, on other hand, source region belong to maritime or continental. So, an air mass develop, develops over continent and air mass develops over sea in the ocean. It cannot form at the junction at the interaction of the shore line and the land and sea. So, these four homogeneous condition provide the unique condition for the formation of air mass. These four unique condition, how it help to form the air mass? When the air uplifted from the ground, air moves up because lower part of the troposphere have comparatively high temperature and temperature decreases with altitude, with height that is popularly known as normal lapse rate. So, temperature decreases 1 degree Celsius at every height of 165 meter. So, another way you can say 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So, lower part of the troposphere, temperature is high, air is little warm, it expands and move upward. As air moves up, it gets densed, cooled down because of effect of the normal lapse rate and it gets accumulated, it becomes heavy. When it becomes heavy, it gets accumulated and the same condition, same phenomena prevail over several days, over a month, couple of months, then gradually a large mass of air gets accumulated with anticyclonic condition in the center. Therefore, in this way, gradually an air mass form. So, so air mass become immense body of air with these four unique, uniform condition, homogeneous condition. On the basis of the condition of the air mass, now very important at this point we have to understand that once an air mass is formed, after the formation air mass leaves the source region, leaves the source region that movement it is because of inclination. Here little technical I would like to explain that when air mass gets the infant stage, so initial stage, so incipient stage, so it passes through incipient stage, accumulation of the air, then become infant stage, little large air body, then it becomes mature stage, coming to the mature stage of the air mass, it covers several thousand kilometer. It covers several latitudes, maybe over more than 20 latitudes, it means more than 2000 kilometer length and width. Friends, when air mass is an infant stage, air mass is very much homogeneous because horizontal expansion is very less. But when air mass extends over 
20 to 30 latitudes over the 2,000 to 3,000 kilometer in distance, then there is little variation in the temperature and pressure. Hence, air mass which is towards low latitude, facing towards low latitude, having little more temperature than the air mass facing the high latitude, where polar areas having less temperature. So, air mass which is facing the colder region get down and air mass get inclined. This inclination, this inclination of the air mass on its axis force the air mass to rotate. This inclination of the air mass on its axis because of difference in temperature, difference in pressure, air mass is forced to rotate, it gets momentum. Therefore, as soon as air mass start momentum, it starts rotating, then it leaves the source region. When an air mass leaves the source region, its character gradually changes, its nature gradually modified by thermal effect, by aerological effect, by obstacle effect. Now, I will explain each step one by one. So, when air mass leaves the source region, so air mass at source region, air mass after the source region gets modified. That is called thermal modification. Air mass become, become thermodynamic effect. Thermodynamic effect means the ground effect on air mass. Before coming to the movement of the air mass, change in the features and nature of air mass, before that I would like to clarify for the students mainly the air masses therefore on the basis of features get classified in different categories like on the basis of source region. On the basis of source region air masses are known as polar air mass which form on the poles, tropical air mass we form in the tropical area, then maritime air mass we form in the ocean and continental air mass we form over continent. Now broadly at this junction you can divide mainly four types of air masses on the basis of source region. I can say number one polar continental air mass, number two maritime polar air mass, number third tropical continental air mass and number four maritime tropical air mass. So, four air masses on the basis of source region. Then air masses are further subdivided on the basis of features and modifications. So, what are the features? Features are temperature, features are moisture, features are stability and instability. So, an air mass could be polar, could be tropical, could be maritime, could be continental. Then on the basis of temperature, warm air mass, cold air mass, moist air mass, dry air mass, stable air mass and unstable air mass. So, broadly if you multiply 4 into 4, it becomes 16 categories. So, overall including all the source reason effect, modification effect, thermodynamic effect and changing character effects in overall air masses can be classified, subclassified into 16 categories. Four on the basis of source regions and remaining 12 on the basis of 
modifications, features and thermodynamic conditions. For instance, I would like to show you on the map, you can see air masses on the continent, polar area called CP, continental polar air mass. If it is about tropical area, the CT, continental tropical air mass, it may develop over the polar areas, ocean, maritime, so MP, maritime polar. If it develops in the ocean of the tropical area, maritime tropical, then after that, it may be divided on the different features, features like cold air mass, warm air mass, moist air mass, dry air mass, stable and unstable. So generally, when you use the term D for dry, M for moist, K for cold, W for warm and S for stable air mass and U for unstable air mass. So gradually overall in overall there are 16 categories of air masses can be found in the world including the source reason and thermodynamic effect modifications. Friends, after the formation when an air mass leaves the source region, so the air mass will be stable or unstable, it will be warm or it is cold, it all depends on the source region and its modifications. For example, if an air mass develops over continent, so definitely that air mass will be dry. And if an air mass develops over the maritime area, the air mass will be moist. Similarly, if an air mass develops over the polar region, high altitude polar area, that air mass will be cold. And if an air mass develop in the tropical area, then air mass will be warm. Therefore, it is very easy to recognize, to understand whether what is the specific feature of the particular air mass, which is the cold air mass or warm air mass, dry air mass or moist air mass. Generally, at this stage, I would like to mention you to make things easy for you that if an air mass is dry, air mass is cold, generally cold and dry air mass is stable. And if air mass is moist and warm, warm and moist air mass is generally unstable because having energy, having moisture, having power. Second factor for stable or unstable depends on the thermodynamic effect. Now, in the thermodynamic effect, if the temperature of the air mass is more than the temperature of the surface ground, then air mass will remain stable because there is no thermodynamic effect. If the temperature of the air mass is more than the temperature of the ground, that air mass is stable. Further movement up to some distance, the temperature of the air mass and the temperature of the ground become equal then air mass will remain stable. But friends, as soon as air mass moves in such an area where ground temperature exceeds, ground temperature is more than the temperature of the body of the air mass, then the ground temperature hit the air mass from below. This is called thermodynamic effect. Hence, 
air mass affected by condensation. It may lead to the snowfall, rainfall, it is precipitation. Then an air mass become unstable. I will give you several example of stable, unstable, unstable, stable, how air mass keep on modifying its feature from beginning to end. So friends, on the basis of these uh, modifications, explanations about air masses, now I will take you to some source region and some case studies which will give you a better analysis, a better understanding about the effect of air mass on weather conditions, effect of air mass on the climate over the continents. Since northern hemisphere is land hemisphere, southern hemisphere is water hemisphere. So, maximum population live in northern hemisphere. So, almost, almost 87 percent of the world population live in northern hemisphere. So, more land over the northern hemisphere. Therefore, more explanation, detailed studies have been found over the air masses of northern hemisphere. So, I will take you to North America, to Europe and to Asia continents, the air masses and the effect. Friends, first of all, I would like to take you in the North America continent. North America continent, as you can see on the map, there are different air masses in uh, winter and in summer. So, throughout the winter, there is one feature of the air mass, then in summer season, there are different air masses. So, over winter season, over winter season, I would like to explain here that you can see on the map that number one continental polar air mass called CP which is the most dominating air mass of North America continent. And I can say this air mass controls over the large area, large geographical area of North America, weather conditions and the climatic conditions. Then you can find the maritime polar air mass of the Pacific in the Pacific Ocean, maritime polar air mass of the Atlantic, that is in the Atlantic Ocean, and maritime tropical, they call MT, maritime tropical air mass in the Atlantic Ocean and maritime tropical air mass of the Pacific Ocean. Friends, these are five air masses of North America in winter season which are more active. Number six is continental Arctic air mass which is very, very cool and dry and more or less remain stable. So, five air masses of North America, I repeat continental polar air mass, maritime polar air mass of the Pacific, maritime polar air mass of the Atlantic, maritime tropical air mass of the Pacific and maritime tropical air mass of the Atlantic. So, these are four, air, five air masses which affect the weather conditions of the North America continent and which affect the climatic conditions. The United States of America, Canada, Mexico, almost 90 percent of the land of the North America continent. If you see the climatic classifications of the climatologists by Copen, by Trivartha, by Thornwit, we can find that these climatic regions are confined coincided with this area of the air masses. So, these air masses control the climatic regions of North America and these air masses modify the daily weather conditions, weekly weather conditions, fortnightly weather conditions, monthly weather conditions of North America. For example, take example number 1 CP, continental polar air mass. Continental polar air mass extend up to northern part of the Canada to the southern part of Canada covering several log square kilometer areas. By origin, by nature, it is cold and dry and stable. 
CP is cold, dry and stable. After the formation, passing through various stages when become mature stage, large area inclined and gets momentum of rotation, then it leaves the source region and moves towards southeast. Gradually passes over great lakes. Gradually passes over great lakes. Friends, now here is very interesting. The air mass which is cold, dry and stable, it passes over the great lakes. It is affected by the temperature and moisture of the great lakes. It receives temperature and moisture of the great lakes that is called affected by thermodynamic effect. The stable air mass now become unstable because it become thermodynamically active and it condensed and forms cloud. It further moves southeast. There are chain of the Appalachian mountains, Appalachian mountains, Siksak mountains, the uh, old mountain chain, the hills, number of hills together get this air mass aloft. By alofting the air mass is further get condensed and leads heavy snowfall. Right from Great Lakes to the New York coast, both the sides of Appalachian leads heavy snowfall. Friends, this is called lake effect snowfall. Such a heavy snowfall covers several, free, several feet snowfall overnight, over a day. CP, continental polar air mass. Setting heavy snowfall, then it moves further south as continental polar air mass gradually moves southward, the snow line, zero degree temperature line, gradually shifts southward and passing through this the eastern states of the US, Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, coming up to the southern part of southeastern part of USA where it makes front, it forms front with maritime tropical air mass of Atlantic. Maritime tropical air mass of Atlantic which is moist, warm and unstable. Friends, maritime tropical air mass of Atlantic which is warm, moist, unstable form front with CP, continental polar and there is frontal precipitation right in the Luciana up to the Florida. From New Orleans, taking from New Orleans to Miami, this region gets rainfall due to the frontal precipitation. Then as soon as CP, continental polar air mass moves southward, Maritime polar air mass of Pacific, MP Pacific, maritime polar air mass of Pacific try to enter in North America continent and at source it is cool, moist and unstable. Now friends, I would like to mention here the maritime polar air mass which is cool, moist and unstable try to enter in Canada, US towards Alaska region, towards Canada, it's called BC, British Columbia state. On the coastal mountains, coastal range and after coastal range, there is a Mackenzie mountain and later on form the Rocky mountain. Friends, because of the coastal mountain, coastal mountain creates barrier and the maritime polar air mass Pacific get aloft, cool down, sudden cool down and leads heavy snowfall. Such a heavy snowfall, if you see 
the sea coast of the North America continent, that heavy snowfall along the slope of the mountain and mountain slope merging with ocean, Pacific Ocean. Large amount of snow forms glacier and glacier moves down in the Pacific Ocean and have cut down the coast of the Canada and it has formed highly zigzag coast. Those zigzag coast formed by glacier erosion known as fjords. You can find the Norwegian fjords, the Canadian fjords, the two major fjords in the world. This is because of MP, maritime polar air mass of the Pacific Ocean. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the maritime polar air mass of the Atlantic Ocean, it moves, it moves towards south and enter and enter in the areas of Newfoundland, northeastern of the Canada, northeastern coast of Canada. And friends, towards the northeastern coast of Canada, till this air mass passing over the sea water of the effect of Labrador current, it is stable. But when it crosses the Labrador, it moves towards Newfoundland, where the little area of the Gulf Stream warm current near Newfoundland, then it is affected by thermodynamic effect, temperature and moisture of the ground hit this air mass, maritime, polar, Atlantic air mass. It hit, become unstable. And when it become unstable, it said dry snow called sleet. The sleeting, the sleeting effect, sleeting effect, northeastern part of Canada by northeast winds, locally known as northeaster. So two local winds I'd like to mention here. When CP moves south, it affects the very, very snow laden winds in Alaska. They're called blizzards. So origin of blizzards because of primarily because of CP. And secondly, the sleets, northeastern part of Canada, the sleets form because of the maritime polar air mass of Atlantic. So sleeting in the northeastern part of Canada. Friends, number five, the maritime tropical Pacific. Maritime tropical Pacific air mass, which is warm, which is moist and unstable. Warm, moist and unstable. Now, to have a better understanding, I would like to mention you if you have little background of the world wind systems, then you can find during winter season, during winter season, the westerlies, westerlies winds are very, very strong. Westerly winds are very, very strong and these westerly winds, these westerly winds push this maritime tropical air mass of the Pacific towards the coast of America. By nature, it is warm and moist, unstable, affected by westerlies. It hit the coast, it hit the coast of USA, little part of the Mexico and in the California Strait, California Valley, which is very famous Silicon Valley having a great rift of the USA called Sacramento San Joaquin Valley. In Sacramento, in San Joaquin Valley, till the, the mouth of the California region, there is a snowfall, the rainfall, rainfall in the winter season. This winter rainfall caused by air mass as well as supported by the westerlies, make the typical Mediterranean type of climate. The San Francisco, Fresno, Portland, Auckland, a number of San Jose, 
A number of industrial cities, towns have been developed in Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley and the, the San Francisco Bay receives winter rain all because of this maritime tropical air mass of the Pacific and Westerlies. Friends, this region, because of the Mediterranean type of climate formed by the, the maritime tropical air mass of Pacific and Westerlies creates a specific viticulture, viticulture in California states of USA. Friends, these are five air masses and their effect over North America during winter season. Similarly, in summer season, these air masses are different. In summer season, the another air mass develop which is called CT, continental tropical. You can see on the map, the air masses of the summer season, if you count, there is a continental Arctic, which is CA, very cold, dry, stable. Then the air mass which are affecting the climatic regions of North America during summer season are number one, CP, continental polar air mass, MP, maritime polar air mass of the Pacific, MPA, maritime polar air mass of Atlantic, MTP, maritime tropical air mass of Pacific, MTA, maritime tropical air mass of Atlantic. Apart from these five air masses, number six one is CT, continental tropical air mass which is hot and dry. Therefore, in summer season, rather five, there are six air masses which affect the weather conditions, climatic conditions of North America continent. So take example number one. Number one, continental polar air mass, which is CP. CP at source, it is cold and dry. And friends, it is summer season. During summer season, because of more thermal effect, radiational effect, convectional effect, height of the air mass is little high from the ground. Therefore, in summer season, when the continental polar air mass, CP, leave the source region, it's got some momentum and leave the source region, it shifts southward and passing over great lakes. Now, mind here, in summer season, it is not affected by thermal modification. It is not affected by thermodynamic effect because of the altitude and speed. The height of the air masses in summer season is little high and movement is little faster. So, there is no lake effect in summer season. This air mass remain stable all the way it come along the eastern coast of USA, along the New England states, New England states. There are seven states in the northeastern part of USA, like northeastern part of India. In India, we say seven sisters, there are seven states. Similarly, in USA, there are seven states in the northeastern, they are called New England states. So, over New England states, Coming to the coast of New York, this air mass remain cold and dry. Maritime tropical Atlantic, now very interesting to understand here. Maritime tropical Atlantic, MTA. In summer season, MTA, maritime tropical Atlantic is warm, moist, 
unstable and aggressive warm moist unstable and aggressive why it is aggressive here is mechanism of global wind system will help you to understand why i had used the term aggressive friends this is the latitude between 30 to 35 30 to 35 latitudes are the transition zone where there is seasonal changes in the wind direction during winter season 30 to 35 latitudes are affected by westerlies so moves west to east they are westerlies same latitudes 35 to 30 during summer season they are affected by easterlies popularly known as trade winds due to the effect of the easterlies due to the effect of the trade winds the air mass of the europe gradually shifts it shifts towards usa due to the trade winds and the size of maritime tropical atlantic become immensely large large amount of moisture so become highly aggressive it moves northward having rainfall over the florida region friends this is the reason that the florida region the the, the mobile region of the southern part of the us this region receives both winter and summer rainfall in winter because of frontal precipitation in summer season because of air mass precipitation while giving rain along the eastern coast of the usa maritime tropical air mass moves towards north and at the northeast of usa near new england state now see the front one is cp continental polar air mass which cold dry stable other one is MTA maritime tropical air mass which is warm moist unstable aggressive and four form the extreme opposite nature of front friends they develop the front temperate cyclone so they release the frontal precipitation during summer season why eastern coast of USA with the same latitude as come to the western part is part of more rainfall this is because in summer season there are frontal precipitation formed by cp and mta friends as soon as cp moves south maritime polar air mass of pacific mpp maritime polar pacific which is cool moist and unstable it enter in the united states of america and canada affected by coastal mountains affected by rocky mountain get aloft as i told you during summer the height of air mass is little high so it get aloft and it cool down it leads heavy rainfall the heavy rainfall over the leave windward side and less rainfall over the leeward side and friends now it's very important here a moist moist unstable air mass when enter in the interior of canada passing over the prairie region it become dry and stable it becomes dry and stable further it moves south it moves south because of southern movement it has already become dry stable and get affected by the rocky mountain it pushed the wind of the rocky mountain now very interesting here because of the effect of the dry stable air mass which pushed the wind of the rocky mountain the wind along the eastern slope of rocky mountain blowing with a high speed it blowing downward affected by catabatic condition gets temperature and become warm because of 
the warm effect of the air, entire snow melt down. This hot wind which blow along the eastern slope of Rocky Mountain locally known as Chinook. Due to the blow of Chinook, it entire ice melts down, snow melts down. Therefore, Chinook also known as snow eater. Chinook winds known as snow eater. It completely snow disappears. And it remain dry and stable. Dry, stable and there is in southern part covering over the New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado region, the southern part, southern part of the USA over Mexico, there is a CT, continental tropical, which is, which is hot and dry. Hot, dry, stable. Friends, there is a dry, stable from the north, continental, hot, dry, stable. The dry and dry air mass, warm and warm air mass join and form a stable front. This warm condition, stable, dry condition has prevailed over a lot of square kilometer area and this is the reason that no winds from the sea are able to enter in this part. Therefore, southern part of USA has been converted as a desert. You must have heard the, the Pented Desert, the Sonoran Desert, the, the Mexican Desert, New Mexico Desert, Arizona Desert. This is the desertification, this formation of desert because of the CT, continental, tropical, hot and dry. Remaining two air masses, one is the maritime polar air mass, maritime polar air mass because of the less moisture and the movement, it moves because of the jet streams, it moves towards the eastern part, so it doesn't affect North America continent in summer season. Similarly, maritime tropical Pacific, maritime tropical Pacific, friends, I told you in summer season, the 30 to 35 latitudes affected by monsoon winds, say the trade winds, the easterly winds. Due to the easterly effect, maritime tropical Pacific leaves the coast of USA and all the way it moves towards the eastern coast of the Asia continent and it remains unaffected. So mainly during summer season, the the continental polar, maritime polar, and maritime tropical Atlantic affect the moisture, and continental tropical so affect the temperature okay, of that. Sir, we have yeah. no time left. Thank you so much, sir, for your lecture. Thank you so much, viewers, for watching us. Thank you so much. Yeah.